the bring the lion out. Bring the lion out. Bring the bring the lion out. Welcome to your horoscope for the full moon in Leo. This is happening on February the 6th at 5.30 a.m. If you're in the southern hemisphere with me. So on that idea, if you're up and awake, go and watch the moon set on the 6th of February. And that will be the perfect exact moment to let go everything that we're about to discuss and discuss and set it forward. So let's first of all think about Leo. Let's think about the basic tenements of Leo and all that we love and know and believe to be true about Leo. Leo is the lion. Leo is ruled by the sun. Leo is proud and confident and unafraid to embody themselves. They're very, they're very embodied individuals. I think that we really need to remember that Leo rules the heart chakra I know I'm getting my, I'm developing my language around the chakra system that I know to be true exact Leo is like a beautiful gilded heart so on that we know that their actions sometimes can be misread as sort of you know like up themselves but that's really that's critical and that's not uh, important or necessary we know that they're leading from the heart and they express themselves in such a way in order for us all to glean from that and to experience that too so for you my cancer risings leo rules your second house which is where you find abundance it's where you have access to money it's where your value system lays your talents and your values so if everything that I was describing about Leo made you feel a little bit uncomfortable and if you transpose that layer onto your second house and you're reminded of maybe different experiences along the road of life where your uh, shine was sort of snuffed out a little bit or you were told not to be so up yourself or vibrant or you got tickets or anything like that and if that criticism has affected in some ways your relationship with your talents and your value system then I would say that this full moon in Leo and indeed every full moon in Leo is your opportunity to kick that effing criticism to the curb and say goodbye that your talents your value system, your access to money and taking care of yourself and those that you love is in your power. And you're a freaking lion in that way. We all have different lived experiences. So for some cancers, they won't really experience this in that way. They'll be like, oh, no, that, yeah, I am really proud in my work and I am really proud of my talents. And I do get out there and I shine as brightly as I can and I let my mane do its thing. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really connected to my second house and my Leo. There are other cancers that, that do not, that, aren't, that don't. They've had an experience where they were told to like rein it in or told to shut up or, or told that they weren't very talented or they weren't particularly good or their ideas weren't valued. And so either way, a full moon in Leo for all cancers is that moment to be like, I actually am really talented and my value system is in really great shape and I can have the money that I need to have a nice life and I don't need to feel guilty about that. I don't need to feel shame. I can feel pride in my abilities. <laughs> that's the reading by cancer. No, I'm kidding. But that's ultimately the sentiment. That's all you really need to think about whenever you see that a Leo full moon is coming up. If it's, a, if it's a continual reminder to yourself that you're worth it, then you let yourself have that reminder. If it's a celebration of what you've turned your life into, you know, if you sort of earn your money, if your talents are quite showy, you know, if, that's, if there's something quite visible about the way that you create and the way that you um, 
express your talents, then congratulate yourself, Eddie. Amazing. I love it. <laughs> now, this lunation, so the moon's at 16 degrees of Leo. It's forming a T-square, okay? So the clagginess, the sort of difficult to ignite feeling that all of us have been having, well, not all of us, but, you know, most of us <laughs> um, have been having at the start of this year, we can put down to Mercury, Mars, Uranus, all in retrograde. <clears throat> That's something that is just a fact and it shows up for different people in different ways. What I'm saying is if your 2023 hasn't activated the way that you wished that it would on the 1st of January, then that's all right because of this. And so we can work with that. We can work with the tethered feeling of retrograde. And we can now recognize that all of those planets have station direct, Uranus station direct in Taurus on the 23rd of January, which was the last cab off the rank. And now, so for the next two and a half months or so, we're going to have a feeling of um, progress. There's going to be a feeling of moving forward. There's going to be a feeling of these issues finding some, um, you know, next next clicking over in the cog. I won't say resolution, but, you know, there's going to be a changing of the gear. We can get things done now. Having said all of that, though, so think of Uranus, Uranus in Taurus, the sort of uh, the emphasis of Taurus for us in the astrology for the last 12 months. Remember we had those eclipses that I was speaking about in Taurus and Scorpio. We'll still be experiencing the final crescendos of those e eclipses at the end of this year. Also Uranus, the planet of absolute rebellion, and, you know, flipping the script of changing our perception has been in Taurus, I think, in, since 2019 and will be there until 2026. So if we meditate on the sentiment of Uranus, it's got, think about Saturn being the perceived outer limits of our universe. For a long time there, as far as we knew it, Saturn was it. Saturn was the limit, the boundary is all of that astrological information, the, the rings of Saturn, all embodied in that, that planet. Time went on, the telescope technology was evolved to a point where we found Uranus, and that flipped the script on our outer perceptions, our outer boundaries. I'm saying all this for a real purpose, there's something about limitation here, Cancer, perceived limitation. We can tie this into our second house, definitely. Leo in the second, your talents, your values, and the square, the pressure of perceived limitation. So let's have a look. Your Taurus placement is your 11th house, so that's your sense of community and belonging. The greater sense of humanity. So for a Cancer, for Cardinal Water, for my chariots in the room, remember this is your tarot card, honey. So this is emotional initiation. This is no fear about moving into the emotional realm. This is balancing light and dark. This is an ability to regulate the emotions, all of the beautiful cancer principles, a lot of nurturing can happen from that space because your own emotions are being committed to in their evolution, right? So this revolution that you can feel in the community, this revolution that is on the very tippy-tippy of our tongue that's about to start, I feel that this moon is squaring Uranus, the outer limits, to remind you that the limits to your talents and the limits to your abilities are a perception rather than a physical manifestation of anything. You have so much in you, Cancer, so much to give. And you should do so, you do do so with pride. When you don't think about it, man, like set yourself free. So talented, so capable, so generous with 
those talents, with those abilities. When you're on a roll, you're on a roll, Cancer. So I like this Uranus being uh, nudging in, saying, hello, hi, it's me again, the perceived outer boundaries. What are your perceived outer boundaries look like? That's how I'm reading this. Does that make sense? I hope it does. There's, an, there's another square, there's another pressure <clears throat> here. This time it's between Venus and it's between Mars. So we know Mars is still in Gemini. Mars is still causing a ruckus. Mars is still being bolshy and butch and annoying in Gemini. For you, this is your uh, 12th house. So this is your unconscious reality. Okay, so there's this, you know, the, the dreamscape being really sort of violent maybe, but turbulent might be a great word for it. There's something that's coming out in your unconscious self that you don't quite know what it is. Mm -hmm. This is in, so Mars is at 11 degrees of Gemini, where that's happening in square pressure with Venus in Pisces. Now this I look at as like a soothing balm, like a sort of like an extra <clears throat> offer of healing, like a, like a, yeah, like an ointment. Venus loves Pisces. Venus, the, the energy of, you know, the femme energy of pleasure, beauty, love, um, gorgeousness. I say femme and I say butch simply because that's, you know, sort of one of the <laughs> silly book, you know. Men are from Mars and women are from Venus, you know. No shade, but that's a very silly book. Um, also, <laughs> also, as we evolve, as we push the outer limits, as we extend the boundaries, um, we find different language. And, you know, you're sitting at a queer um, tarot reading, so suck it. This is my language. <laughs> Butch and femme. <laughs> Sorry, that was a side note. Venus in Pisces is in your ninth house of your spirituality, of your um, philosophical lessons. And so there's a sweetness here. There's a salving sort of balm. Maybe the lessons that you're receiving or the information, the intel that you've been privy to, what you're learning in that realm of sort of maybe, you know, no dogma, but like sort of like more sort of like structured philosophizing you know, your mind is expanding at a rate of knots, cancer, but there's something that you're learning that's maybe not in opposition, but yeah, in opposition to the sort of folk magic of, you know, tarot and, you know, just, uh, story sharing, whereas the ninth house is more sort of broad. So there's an emphasis there, there's a sweetness there that can maybe help you translate some of this pressure in the 12th, some of this pressure in, the, in your unconscious reality, your dreamland. I wonder if there's the turbulence that you've been, I don't know if you've been like not getting very much sleep or the sleep that you have been getting has not been satisfying, something like that. But it's sort of like if you can find the connector pot points as to why things are going so you know, it's it's like a washing machine in there at the moment. Maybe the Venus presence in the ninth, maybe this is an invitation to do some further research into why this might be. And are these premonitions that you're having, should they be sort of like swept under the rug and ignored? Or could they be written down and investigated a little further? There might be things that you know that you don't didn't realise cancer that's a clunky way to say it you know more than you think you do the outer limits of yourself are just a perception yeah i'm gonna get you just a little tarot card to kiss you off on your sweet sweet journey oh. ah the page of wands great the page of wands is a student of magic you can see here, I'm going to hold it up to you. That wand is a spark. That's fire. That's magic. That's a key. And the page is a dutiful student. The page is bursting with a want to know and to learn more. I really see this reading as a beautiful invitation for you to take yourself seriously, Cancer.
that whatever magical access you wish to have is yours and you're not making it up and you're not a liar. You're a good person. You're very talented. Your value system is top notch. You're a cancer after all. You know, you are the nurturer of the zodiac. But there's, that's one part of you. That's very important for me to say at this reading. That's one part of you. It's a beautiful, vibrant, in, intensely important part of you. But that's just one facet to your diamond. You don't need to live the life of the caregiver alone. What am I trying to say? That pathway doesn't have to be a singular pathway as caregiver only. There's other portals for you to open up at this full moon and in your life forevermore. The other facets to your diamond is what I'm interested in, Cancer. Other parts of you that can sparkle, can spark. I love that this 12th and 9th house relationship is occurring here. To put it really simply, the 12th is magic. The 9th is documented magic if that makes any sense you can refine your impulse your natural born talent with lessons with guidance and so seek out that guidance my page of wands you'll find it that's your reading ah oh, i feel so cleansed what a good set i really think i am happy with these i'll have to tell you in the editing suite <clears throat> anyway um head to umaruby.com get your birth chart read uh tip money is always lovely little extra you can head to umaruby no buymeacoffee.com forward slash umaruby and throw some money in the jar if you can afford it uh you don't have to this is all offered with freedom and love forever so I'll be speaking to you in two weeks at the new moon in Pisces. I can't wait. So on that, that's actually going to be further to your, uh, maybe that new moon in Pisces actually could be the night that you call in the lessons. You actively ask for them. Allow this full moon to get off your own back. I actually am beautiful and talented and a nice person and good at my, like, I'm really good. I'm a good person. <laughs> That's what I want you to hold on to at this full moon in Leo, Cancer. All right, I'm off. I gotta go. I gotta go uh, publish these things. Oh, holy, holy hell! All right, bye.